As entrepreneurs, we want to make a huge impact. We recognize that the, to the extent the value we create in our own light, enlightened self-interest, we do exceptionally well as well. Well, one of the reasons I do these interviews is so that you can meet other remarkable entrepreneurs who are indeed making a difference. And today I've got a remarkable young individual. Uh, he is a hustler. He's a serial entrepreneur. Uh, he's still got his day job. Uh, he's an engineer at IBM, but he's also started four businesses. And I know this is a little unusual, but I've, he started a business that I think has a lot of opportunity for traction. And just some of the lessons that he's learned that he's shared, I want to share with you because it's going to help each and every one of us accelerate our success even more. I'm John Bowen. You're at AES Nation. Stay tuned. You do not want to miss this. Ordinary success? No way. You want amazing, remarkable, exceptional breakthroughs. Dig deep. Think bold. Drive hard. Watch yourself soar beyond your dreams. AESNation.com. Ian, thank you for joining me here today. Uh, you have, uh, you know, I, I started with the hustler entrepreneur. And, you know, when we go to one of the business you launched, everybody will understand that hustle part a little bit more. But, you know, you, I mean, are a remarkable individual. I, I worked for IBM in grad school, a short period, right, you know, for, a uh, summer job, and I, I love doing it. It was the best thing I ever did in my life because I met my wife of 36 years now uh, during that uh, time at IBM. So I have a lot of fond memories of IBM. Uh, I grew up in upstate New York where it all started and so on. And, and But, you know, that was enough to keep me busy. That's not enough alone. I mean, you're out there starting businesses and really making a difference. So give us a little bit of background before we dive into some of the you know, the key lessons that you've learned in this journey. Right. So my background is an entrepreneur. I knew I was an entrepreneur by the age of nine years old. Just I knew my mind was wired very differently because I saw things that people didn't really see as a, as, a, as a kid. So, for example, I know back in fourth grade, my teacher used to have different class competitions where he would hand out money or I guess play money for answering questions in class. And I actually found out a way to actually hustle that and make more money without actually having, 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 having to actually answer the questions. So I'd essentially just barter with kids for money for favors to a point where I was able to, so towards the end of class, you would have a, an auction. So as a kid, I was able to buy everything and completely dominate the entire class just by outthinking and outsmarting people. So ever since then, I knew I had a knack for business. So as a kid all the way through high school, I taught myself how to code began building websites as a web designer. That was my first business. My first client was my uncle. I built a website for his school, for his preschool. And from there, I just kind of get, I kept on getting family referrals from there. And it always tell, taught me to be very entrepreneurial in terms of having different side hustles, even as a, as a student. So fast forward to now, where I have multiple businesses. So by day, I'm an evangelist. I'm a tech evangelist, tech evangelist at IBM. My background is, is uh, as a computer engineer. But I've always been into technology, and I always like to stay up to, up to date in things. So I also have different different businesses, such as a video production company, where we recently just published our first feature film on DC Fashion Week that's available on Amazon Video, and hopefully coming soon to Netflix as well. So I also have an e-commerce site where I import batteries and sell them all over the world. So it's essentially an Amazon FBA business. Then I'm, I love to take action. So one day I read this post on, on how to make money via Air, 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 Airbnb. So I ended up getting an apartment and just putting on there for an entire year on, on Airbnb. And I saw so much value from that and so much business from that to a point now it's actually a full-time business for mine as well. So from there I also have other businesses such as making apps. So my newest product I'm working on is Spear Hustle, which I will talk to you down the line in this show. I'm feeling like I'm a slacker listening to you here that, uh, you know, I, I'm not hustling enough. Uh, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to have Ian on is, you know, today's technology 
allows us to do so many things. And, you know, if you want to make a difference, you can and and you can t what Ian is doing and you know is sharing a whole bunch of different businesses he's testing and you know as as we test and the market price tells us what's working you know then we can even get more and more focus and really create even more value and I know uh, Ian you are doing that and and you know what I want to start with some of the key lessons that you've shared with me as we were talking earlier and I, I want to start the first one because this is something that, you know, I think you, a trait you share with, you know, most entrepreneurs, and sometimes I'm not sure if it's we're real smart or real dumb, but it's that we dive right in. And tell me a little bit about what you mean when you talk about diving right in. Well, I found out from just life experience that people, myself as well, have lots of limitations they put on themselves. They're hesitant, they're fearful, they try to think of the perfect way to do something, especially in terms of a business. And I discovered the best way, the best feedback is real feedback. The best feedback is reality. So in a way, I like to think of myself as a scientist. So coming back from my engineering background, I like to follow the, I like to follow the scientific method approach. So I don't tell myself I can't do anything unless I have empirical evidence telling me I can't do it. Right. So the, and the only way to get empirical evidence is to actually go out there and experiment. So I feel like by diving right in, you get real world feedback on whether or not something can be done. Today, you know, with the technology, I mean, it's just, it's so amazing. I mean, it doesn't cost that much to test. And, and what we want to test, we're doing the, uh, I did take three years of statistics and, you know, don't have the engineering degree, but have, you know, the, the analytical uh, chops, I hope. And the part that I love about technology that we never had before is that we, we can do kind of the minimum viable product and put it out there. And unlike asking our friends or our family members to give us advice, uh, they're not gonna write us a check. And one of my uh, uh, good friends, Dan Sullivan, a strategic coach, says only test with check writers. Well, the, you know, the internet allows you to do that. You can dive in and test and, you know, uh, Ian, I mean, I don't know how it's worked for you, but I know the market's really good at giving me feedback. Sometimes it says, John, you're doing really good. And other times it goes, no, nope, no checks. You're not doing that. It's not that good idea. Right, yeah. So actually, perfect story for that is with, while, found, while founding Peer Hustle, I was trying to fix the problem I had in my prior company, my, my prior startup, where we're essentially a solution trying to find a problem. So with Peer Hustle, I try to fix that by putting down a list of problems I had myself in my everyday life on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. And I said, okay, what's the best problem I can solve myself? And the problem I, I found was finding somebody locally who was skilled at something. So whether it's a web designer, whether it's a videographer, photographer, a stylist, makeup artist, lawyer, what have you, trying to find somebody locally. So trying to find local freelancers or skilled workers. So with Peer Hustle, I didn't want to go in there without knowing anything, right? So going back to the whole premise of testing in reality or following the scientific method, I first put a landing page. Put, put a page saying, on mobile on-demand freelancer marketplace. Put a form saying, put your email address here if you're interested. And I put that on Craigslist. And I had over 150 people sign up in the first month. Just a landing page with an email saying, coming soon. So that told me essentially that there was an idea out there and there was something worth chasing, worth investing in. And it really leads to the second part too, because I know when you're looking at, okay, I'm going to dive deep in something, but I want to dive deep in where I think there's a real opportunity. And, you know, you, you talk about uh, really in the, the aiming for the moon and, and this is a, uh, you know, we're, I'm out here in Silicon Valley and, you know, Google has a whole division uh, that is all about moonshots. And uh, a good friend, Peter Diamandis and Ray Kurzweil have started Singularity University with the idea of that's all they're doing is helping people think through shooting for the moon. But, you know, when you're diving in and you're focusing on the moon, you can really create some amazing things. I mean, you know, how, how did you get started on all this? So with Peer Hustle, the whole premise was me trying to solve my own problem. So I have a background as a freelancer. I began freelancing as a videographer on the side. So I, 
And that began as me going out there traveling on vacation and doing travel videos. And I just fell in love with making videos to a point where I got really great at it, to a point where my friends were asking me to make videos for them, to a point where I kind of began to build a portfolio. And since I had a background as a web designer, I was able to quickly test the market by making a web page and seeing if there's any interest out there. So I put, put my, my portfolio online. People began contacting me for jobs. And next thing you know, I'm a freelance videographer. So working as a freelance videographer, working as a freelance software developer, I've had experience with all these different freelance, market, freelance marketplace sites. And I've seen all the different issues they have. So I've, I've, I've tried to go out there and try to solve that problem of trying to cater not only to just people out there online, but also people in the local city. So with Pre Hustle, we're trying to build a local on-demand freelancer. So think Uber for freelancers, where you simply go in there, search, search a skill set such as Photoshop, uh, web design, lawyer, and we'll show you people in your local area. So the process of building that has been very, very, I would say, efficient and very streamlined since I have all these other things I'm working on. So I've tried to outsource it to, be, to just to have time to do other things as well. So we first began by doing a test online with the landing page. From there, I did the mock-ups by going to other sites like 99designs, going out to getting feedback, then going back to my base of people I found via the landing page who signed up for the early invite and asking them for feedback on the idea. So from getting feedback from there, we went through every single process, testing and getting feedback to a point where we were able to launch the app within eight months. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, no. it's, it's amazing um, how quickly you can go and do this. And, and that, that, I mean, it was, it was funny when I received the email from you uh, or from someone on your team to uh, suggesting you might be a good candidate for the podcast. It was funny. I was at Beaver Creek uh, in Colorado skiing with 12 friends and we we have a phenomenal chef we had hired and it was the second year we'd hired and we wanted to hire a videographer and i'm not uh, i live out in silicon valley as i mentioned didn't know really anybody there got a lot of connections and i your thing came by i downloaded the app and a whole bunch of videographers came up now happened one of the uh, the owner of the house uh knew someone and they came over right away so we used them versus your app but it's it's really you know it's so hard you know, there's so many people out there and trying to connect and provide that connection. I mean, the opportunity to scale up and, and this is something all of us as entrepreneurs should be thinking about. I mean, the tools to connect now and to start a conversation and monetize that no matter what business we're in, whether we're in widgets or professional services or, you know, just simply connecting freelancers with check writers, uh, you know, the opportunity to scale up and when we look at the valuations, certainly of our uh, Airbnb and Uber and on and on. I mean, I always find it hard to believe that Airbnb has a higher valuation, I think, than any of the motel companies or hotel companies out there. And they don't own a single room. So, I mean, so I mean, when we talk about aiming for the moon, it's huge. One of the things, though, um, that's so impressive, you know, the skill levels, Ian, that you've been able to do, and you, you and I both are big believers in lifelong learning, but I, I wanna talk about how you're getting that knowledge. I mean, the, you know, the guys like me, I turned 60 uh, uh, late last year, and, and you know, initially we all thought, you know, you go to, you know, go get your undergrad degree, I got a couple of master's degree, I got a couple of other professional things and all this. You know, it was formal, formal, formal. Um, you know, you're saying it's a little different now. How are you yeah. doing it? Right. So nowadays, technology has basically made the world flat, right? So anything out there you want to learn is available. So all these different businesses I've had, whether it's being a web developer, whether it's being a videographer, all of this has been self-taught, whether it's going and watching videos on YouTube, whether it's going and signing up on, for courses like on lynda.com or going and just getting books from the library. I would say almost everything I've done in life has been something I learned outside of school. I have a bachelor's and master's in computer engineering, but I've never used it used anything I've learned in school outside of school. <laughs> right? So everything has been self-taught. So it's, it's so now that the world is flat, I have the mindset that if I want to do anything, I can just merely go out there and find access to it. 
and, and then I can tap into that resource and try to go to the next level by going out there and, and just executing off of their free, free things out there available on the web. So I learned this at a young age when I was a kid. So when I was about nine years old in school, my mom would always take me, well, she would actually force me to go to the library every single week and borrow books. So it came to a point where I got tired of reading storybooks, right? And I wanted something exciting. So I, I loved playing video games. So I told myself, how do they actually make video games? So I'd go to the library every week, first began by getting books on magazines on computer games, then got books on how to make my own games. And from there, that's where I developed that interest to go out there and actually learn something. So I, I got that hacker mentality at a very young age of going out there and teaching myself something. And ever since then, it's kind of followed suit all the way till where I am now, where I'm still constantly going out there and trying to learn. It is so amazing. I mean, I've, even at this late age of 60 here, uh, it's amazing what you can accomplish because I, you know, really the internet, I've been, it grew up in Silicon Valley. I'm pretty knowledgeable on technology, did write early on some uh, financial software program and uh, a few of the different languages there, Cobalt being the main one at the time. So I'll date myself there. But the, the idea, you know, today of being a lifelong learner, I mean, if you're listening to this podcast or watching this video, I mean, you, this is, we're, we're learning together. And that's one of the reasons why we do it at AES, AES Nation. But I got to tell you, there's so many tools. I, you know, you have a technology problem or any kind of problem, you know, go to YouTube as Ian was talking about. And, you know, quite often I find that instead of calling my technology help desk and I'm CEO of the businesses. So, I mean, they'll be really responsive. I find it quicker doing the YouTube and they're, they're happier having me do it. And, and the same with, you know, so much learning out there. I didn't know uh, in 2008, 2009, there was a you know, major financial downturn in the, the markets that you are clearly aware of. And as that downturn happened, uh, that gave us an opportunity in our business. The primary business is coaching financial advisors, but we also match successful entrepreneurs with top financial advisors who've been vetted and who are you know, personal chief financial officers to help with those major challenges of building and maximizing personal wealth. Well, one of the things I had worked almost exclusively with the large companies and we had a great business, but the company's major financial institutions got distracted. Some went out of business. And I decided I had to market directly to the advisors and the entrepreneurs. And I didn't know what an SEO was. <laughs> I didn't know what marketing automation. I didn't know, you know anything about video. And I'll tell you, um, Ian, I, don't, I didn't go to any formal classes. Uh, they were all online. They were, you know, on occasion I'd hire a consultant to help me if I needed it. But, you know, it, it, it is just so amazing what's available. And uh, what, what would be your favorite place that you went to for learning that you think your fellow entrepreneurs would be find valuable? I would say YouTube for sure. YouTube is probably my best week. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny how, uh, you know, things have changed. You know, it's not always the most expensive uh, type. Like, I, I like uh, one of the early ones I liked a lot was Creative Live. Uh, they do, you know, full bone, two, three day workshops on different subject matters. They're more on. Uh, uh, photography and video they started but they've really branched out to everything they do a phenomenal job also I, I like the uh, you know so many of the traditional universities it's kind of it's the models changing the the massive classes that you can have and be part of that you can do for free and so you can have the best professor in the world I took a class recently there were 40,000 students in that class Okay, it was one of the most expensive universities in the world, <laughs> and I'm taking it for free. I, you know, I, I, you know, anyone who says they don't think they, you know, know how to do something, well, Google it. You'll see how to do it, and and it will show up. 
Let, let me ask you, you know, one of the things, uh, you know, as a young individual and, you know, an entrepreneur testing a whole bunch of different things, you know, one of the biggest challenges in life, Ian, is believing in yourself. Because when you do, you know, as many things, what happens, the market beats you up on occasion. Yeah. How do you maintain that? Because that's, you know, when I, I was looking at some statistics recently in a new book I'm working on, on entrepreneurship, and the, the, there's there's more business failures than formations for one of the first times ever. And at least since recorded, you know, real good data. And yeah, you know, that's discouraging. I mean, you know, how do you keep so that you're charging ahead and, and can make a difference? I would say it definitely comes down to the way you talk to yourself mentally. So your self-confidence. And I believe you have to be so confident to a point where it's almost delusional where you believe in yourself so much that no matter how, how many failures you have, no matter what obstacles are in your way, you will always find a way to persevere and move on. So that just comes, in my experience, from just going out there and just mentally training myself to view situations differently, to view failure as something that's good. So I would say actually one of my best resources has been this book called Psycho Cybernetics by Dr. Maxwell Maltz, who's known as the as the father of the entire self-help industry. Now, this is an amazing book. It, it told me to reprogram myself in terms of how I think about failure and success. To a point where now, as, as my friends like to joke, I believe I can do anything in the world. So I try to aim for the stars, for the moon, no matter what, knowing that even if you fail, it's not failure if you learn from it. It's, it's really, I mean, I think this is important for all of us as entrepreneurs because if you're out there in the arena playing, you're going to fail. Okay, but if you can have it be the lesson and build from that, uh, believing in yourself uh, is just such a critical thing. And this is, you know, it's kind of funny, Ian, you as an engineer, you know, I'm a financial guy. We're pretty, you know, left brain dominant type. And we're talking about this fuzzy subject. And a lot of times people think, you know, kind of the book, The Secret, just have positive affirmation and everything comes to you. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about that, you know, it's, 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 it's quite honestly, by believing in yourself, you can take massive deliberate action to make things happen. It's what Ian was saying, diving right in. And by doing that, you know, what happens is you attract, you know, people who want to help you be successful. You attract the strategic partners. You attract, you know, so many of the right customers. And if you don't, you pivot. You know, it's a Silicon Valley word for sure, really around the world. But you have the ability to pivot to make a difference. And, you know, one of the things, you know, as you've gone out and you've been starting these businesses and everything else, um, you pivoted and you've started this business, um, you know, pure hustle. I mean, I called you a hustler. I might get in trouble here a little bit in my, the days of political correctness. So I want to have you tell us, how you've been hustling, how you've been pivoting, how you've come up with this business model and what you're looking to achieve. Right, yeah, so with Pure Hustle, it comes from the word hustler, right? So we're trying to make the average person a hustler. We're trying to help them create a side business. So nowadays, the, the, the showing economy has changed the way people operate. It's changed people in terms of their cars. Cars have become resources where people are now able to make, almost have a full-time job by sharing their car. Airbnb has allowed people to share their rooms or their houses and make some extra side money or uh, income. But our biggest resource is our mind and our skill sets. Lots of people have unique skill sets, that whether, especially if they're self-taught, that we try to help them monetize those skill sets. So let's say you're a self-taught web developer and there's somebody out there who wants somebody to build them a website, but they don't necessarily want to hire in a big fancy agency or big shop. Maybe it's the college kid down the block who's amazing at coding that could that has some extra time on the weekend that could build your website for you or your app for you. Or it's the videographer or photographer. Or let's say you want to hire a makeup artist for your wedding, right? So at Peer Hustle, we're getting all these local freelancers and creating a platform platform for them to be on where you can go through and find them very quickly in the same manner you can find somebody on Uber. So we're trying to create an on-demand jobs marketplace, essentially. Well, and it's, it's so hard. I, I know uh, one of the things that there's so much talent in the world, 
but there's so much noise too. And, mm-hmm. you know, matching, you know, from a commerce standpoint, uh, I have a virtual, I have mul- multiple virtual businesses. Uh, Global headquarters here is our pool house in Silicon Valley. And I've got about 60 people working with me, you know, on project basis. And, you know, the amazing things that they're making happen. I mean, working with fellow entrepreneurs that are really talented. But one of the biggest challenges is finding those people, particularly if it's a, you know, one, you're starting something new. And what I love about the idea of whenever you can match these free agents, there's so much value being created. Because, you know, in the past, if we think of a videographer, I'll stay with that, Ian. You know, the the idea was, you know, I I would go out and hire an agency. And we would rent a studio and we'd have all this production. I mean, I would, uh, you know, some of the earliest videos I did, I did a series of videos and spent $40,000 in like a two day period. Okay. Today doing it in the freelance side, and this is for all of us as entrepreneurs. I mean, the, you know, the cost of doing this is so nominal. Once you have your message and you want to leverage these tools, but if you got to find the right creative people and Ian, you know, I commend you for, you know, put, helping put this together. But how, how do let's go on you know, the side of the entrepreneurs, because that's who we're talking to business owners now. H- how do they make the decision? Because, you know, just having a listing or have somebody come up, you know, how do they make that decision? That's the right one to come in and trust with a project. Right. So right now we're actually working on the version 2.0 of Pure Hustle. And the whole premise is you can go and search for skill set. So let's say it's a videographer, right? You put in videographer, it will show you all the local video- videographers in your area. They'll have their own profiles with reviews by people who've hired them in the past. You can contact them on the site. We have built-in communication. So similar to Skype, you can do in-app calling, in-app uh, video chat as well. So you can actually talk to the, to the freelancers ahead of time and agree to, to, to terms on the project. Then once you agree to terms on the project, after viewing the, their portfolio, which is now going to be available in the app as well. So let's say they have the videos in there, the pictures, their website, the references, what have you. You can then put money in escrow. So as opposed to, let's say, finding somebody on Craigslist and just doing cash transaction or something like that, right? Or, or Yelp or what have you. You put money in escrow and the money is only do- passed on to the freelancer after you're pl- pleased with the job. Then in terms of our business model, we, we take a cut from, of the transaction, 10% cut, 5% on it. One of the things I'd recommend you consider, Ian, is this, uh, what Uber does too, where they rate you know both sides. So we're talking about rating the freelancer. I, I would rate the business owner, whether they're paying on time, you know, were they good to work with and so on. Because, you know, Uber, matter of fact, I've had a, a couple of acquaintances who have been tough on their Uber driver and they got voted down and now nobody will pick them up. So, you know, the, that dynamic, I mean, the free markets work and having, you know, good quality information, we can all make a, a difference. So l- let me go to anything else, um, you know, on, on how then, you know, you know, let me put up on the screen, uh, the, uh, uh, the website, I mean, it's an app. So, you know, anybody, there's no cost for an entrepreneur or free agent to go ahead and download this and really get started right away. Is that correct, Ian? Yes, that's correct. Anybody can go out there. So one thing we're trying to fight against is other freelance sites out there, they force the clients or the freelancers to purchase credits just to bid on jobs. And we wanted to completely destroy that because we don't think as freelancers, especially from my own experience, I don't like having to buy credits just to see what's out there. I, I'm with you. I don't know. One, I don't think that model long term will work for all the reasons that are implied by it. Let me go to the last segment here. And I, I want to play back some of the key takeaways that I got from this interview. I mean, you know, one of the things that there are so many bright, talented people out there and we want to connect with them. And, you know, Ian is really working on that with Pure Hustle. So, you know, th- there are tools like that that you and I should be using if we're going to build out our team and really make a big difference. 
though the, the, the first big lesson that Ian shared was that dive right in. And, and I think as entrepreneurs, and this is one of the challenges, as we become more and more successful, it's easy to play it safe. And uh, you know, one of the best examples, having grown up in upstate New York, of playing it safe is Kodak. Uh, they played it safe all the way. I think, I don't remember the exact number. I think it was certainly 200,000. They may have even had 400,000. I think it was a 200 or 180,000 employees, you know, just in Rochester, New York. I mean, just uh, one of the world players and, you know, um, vanished. And they actually were the first ones to start digital cameras. They, they came out with the very first one, but never, they didn't want to lose the film business, uh, you know, the chemicals and all. So, you know, diving right in and testing and being willing to test ideas that are counterintuitive to you because, you know, you may not want to cannibalize your business, but there's a lot of guys like Ian that are more than happy to do it for you if you don't. So there's a real opportunity there. Aiming for the moon, you know, there are all kinds of different things. Moonshots, uh, Google talks about. Uh, Dan Sullivan, a strategic coach, talks about 10x. Peter Diamandis talks about exponential uh, growth What uh, companies. And what, what by going ahead, and I'm thinking of Jim Collins from uh, Good to Great, BHAGs, big, hairy, audacious goals. Thinking out there, you know, 25 years, we're going to be entrepreneurs. Our human longevity is going even longer. All the technology and things that are going on. Well, you know, we've got time. What, what do you want to do that the, that big goal, that moonshot? And yeah, maybe you don't hit the moon, but you're going to do well trying. Lifelong learner, boy, take advantage of this technology. I, I commit to an hour every day. I, I have an interview uh, with one of the top advertising uh, people in the world. I mean, he's just the largest owner, uh, you know, direct mail, just phenomenal in the political arena. And I believe he's 83 or 84 in every day. I mean, this lesson he, I was already doing, but I formalized it after listening to him. Richard, every day takes an hour for learning, whether it's reading a book or on internet videos, whatever it is, making that commitment because that school education, that taught you how to learn. That's about it. Believe in yourself. You've got a lot of people, a lot of stakeholders. You've got your clients, all those teammates, principals, partners, strategic alliance, they're counting on you. You have that opportunity. Believe in yourself. Let the market tell you and guide you. Use that feedback to really make a difference. You know, this has uh, been Grady, and I, I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, I, I wish everybody, you know, go to AES Nation, take a look at the show notes. Uh, you'll have the connections, the links to, uh, if you're listening somewhere in your car or so on, go to AESNation.com. You'll get the links to uh, everything we talked about, including uh, how to download the app for Pure Hustle. In the meantime, remember, your clients and your future clients are all counting on you. Don't let them down. We wish you the best of success. Exceptional remarkable breakthrough aesnation.com